We're sinking our teeth into El Conde. Ha ha. Had to do that. This is a movie that is in theaters briefly before coming out on Netflix on September 15th. So Alonzo and I are going to talk about that. But first, we would love it if you'd subscribe. We are this close, you guys. We are perilously close to hitting 25,000 subscribers, which is my goal for the end of the year. If we can get there, great. If we can get beyond there, even better. But we'd love to have you be a part of it as we get into fall movie season, award season. We'll always find time for cool little stuff like El Conde. So join us, if you would. Thank you. Alonzo, what is this film about? Existen las criaturas del diablo que no tienen alma. Y yo se la voy a salvar. A mí me gustaba matar. A usted le gustaba robar. No, a mí también me gustaba matar. This is the latest from Pablo Lorraine, who uh, most recently uh, gave us uh, Spencer and uh, Jackie, which were very kind of um, sympathetic uh, portrayals of... You know, women who had kind of married into power and were having to deal with the visibility and the other, um, you know, difficulties that come with that. Uh, this is much different. This is a horror movie about Augusto Pinochet. Um, and as I said in my review in the film verdict, um, when sometimes when you're making a movie about one of history's monsters, you just have to make a monster movie. And that is what uh, Lorraine has done. He basically rethinks the idea of Pinochet uh, as a literal vampire, somebody who has been around at least since the French Revolution. Um, and so in favor of the ruling class that early on you see him licking the blood of Marie Antoinette from the guillotine. Uh, <laughs> so we cut to centuries later, and uh, after his bloody rule in, in Chile, um, he is ready to die, this old vampire. And so his family gathers around him uh, mainly to get their hands on his money and to find all these stolen money that he's kept hidden away over the years. They bring in who they think is an accountant, but she is actually a vampire slaying nun from the church <laughs> who has been sent to uh, to uh, to exorcise or destroy Pinochet and to, like, you know, get her hands on the money, too, if she can, if you know what I mean. And uh, and so this movie is a very, very dark political satire dressed as a horror movie shot with great uh, gothic creepiness by the legendary Ed Lockman. Uh, I, you know, this is a, this is a tricky tone to try and make work, but I think it totally does. Um, I, I think that you, you sense the like rage that Lorraine has about Pinochet and like the horrors that he inflicted upon Chile and the way that he is using the tropes of the horror movie to portray just how much of a beast this guy was and how devastating his his policies and his ideas were to the country. Um, so, you know, not for everybody, but uh, I really <laughs> dug it. <laughs> I dug a lot about it for a while. Okay. And as you mentioned, you know, Ed Lockman's cinematography is just luscious. It is just incredibly, richly beautiful in black and white. And there are images over and over again that I was like, whoa, that is gorgeous. That is stunning. The way he uses like the Patagonian scenery and mm. shadows and reflections. There's one scene where um, Pinochet as vampire has turned somebody and you see that person experiencing the first sensations mm. of the rush of that and the fear and the excitement of that. And it's like this person is tumbling across the countryside as if it's as if they're like part of an ice skating pairs team, <laughs> but they're just being held aloft by nothing. And it's exquisitely beautiful and so visceral. And there's such a, a, a I hate to say biting tone, but like darkly biting tone to this, which is smart. And like, there's a really deliciously mean narration that I don't want to say who is yeah. doing it. Cause that was one of the <laughs> neat great reveal, reveals yeah. of it here. Some people have said that they could totally see who that is coming. I didn't see who it was coming. So that was me a neither. nice surprise for me. Um, and I like the performances a lot. I like how this feels kind of like succession because they're all just useless. <laughs> His five kids are all useless and they're all competing. Hovering. They're all they're hovering and competing in the most like perfunctory ways. Like they can't even really even be bothered to try hard to pretend <laughs> to love him and be the favorite. Like they just all are, are useless. So I like a lot about it technically in terms of the idea of it. But once you get past what if Pinochet were an actual vampire? I mm -hmm. feel like that notion runs out of steam hmm. after a while. I feel like it. it's, and I admire this, and this is true, I think, with a lot of Pablo Lorraine films, 
like Jackie, like Spencer, like I admire a lot about them technically, but there is like an emotional remove to mm. them. I do think this actually is is like those films in that it is a fantasy reimagining of what a really famous person's life is like. And there is the claustrophobia of that. Like they're super famous, but within the confines of these corridors right, right. and these hallways with like statues and important artwork like they're just alone yeah. and misunderstood <laughs> and cramped <laughs> that's true that, there is definitely a lot of connective tissue i just meant yeah. it's different in that he clearly has compassion for oh for, for sure. jacqueline kennedy and, mm -hmm. and diana that he does not have for pinochet nor should he mm -hmm. uh, i really like paula luxinger as the nun i so think good. she's got like I, I said in my in my review that she's got Anna Maria Falconetti eyes, you know, the woman who was in <laughs> Passion of Joan of Arc. Like she has one of those silent film faces Completely. that just reflects so much. And um, yeah, it, it, it there's just the, I don't know. I, I I I thought that yes, it is a it is very much a premisey movie and premises can wear out but for me they kept finding enough new things but in between like the wife and the manservant who he'd, <laughs> he'd enslaved back during the russian revolution his renfield <laughs> his, exactly yeah 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 the whole thing about like you know like like lorraine does not want to let this guy off as like oh you're sort of classic sexualized bloodsucker no this guy rips hearts out of chests and eats them it's and sometimes, vicious and sometimes makes them into smoothies which is really gross <laughs> yeah but i feel like he goes through that well several times too many because like once it's established okay he keeps the frozen hearts and he makes them into smoothies like yeah. i think showing that like once maybe twice is enough to indicate to us like how i hate to say the word bloodless but it's like how just systematic he is about like this is a feeding mechanism sure is, there's no passion to it this is just like survival <laughs> but there's a difference <laughs> between like the, the the fresh beating hearts and the like frostbitten hearts that have been in the freezer for too long it's like the ice cream and mother you know oh my god i agree <laughs> that the nun is amazing because she's having to do a couple things at the same time here when she's under the guise of being an accountant she's interviewing all of the kids and all the family <laughs> and so she's got to like trick them into telling her stuff by yes. being who they need to be yes, by absolutely. indicating to us how she's manipulating them at the same time <laughs> and that is so subtle like the slightest shifts in her face to let us know yes. oh yeah i'm working them. <laughs> so she's fantastic yeah yeah i i don't know i i like this a lot and and i think you know if you if you're on the fence about it it's gonna be on netflix so you know pop it in give it a shot see what you think uh but i i, I liked it what's your number i said eight and a half okay i will say 7.2 so perhaps we're not set that far apart at all okay. but most of my number is just like the technical stuff ed lockman sure. baby what Woo. he does in color for todd haynes <laughs> in far from heaven and carol he does in black and white here like it's just lustrous and ugh, gorgeous yeah. i think our only split is that does it work all the way to the end and for me it does and i guess for you maybe not okay check it out let us know